Maui's cults unexpectedly found themselves in the headlines last month as police investigated the strange case of the women rescued from the remnants of a sect where they'd been for 30 years. Brixton in South London was a hotbed of revolutionaries back in that day and one retired ex-dissident, the comedian Alexei Sale, has been revisiting the area with some of his erstwhile comrades. Porrick O'Brien went with him. Arise, you starvelings from your slumbers. Arise, you citizens of want. Back then, Maoists mattered. Black Panthers roared. Revolutionary feminists ran town halls and militant squatters neighbourhoods. It was the 70s. Now, they're the retired ex-dissidents. Alexei Sale's parents were communist royalty in Liverpool. Establishment of a sort. Q Judean People's Front Style Rebellion. I moved to the left of my parents and I became a Maoist. Right. We used to have these rows at the kitchen table, you know. Don't call your mother a reactionary running dog of the capitalist class, Alexei. Well, she is, Dad. Chairman Mao says <laughs> that she's waving the red flag to defeat the red flag. She's a revisionist Rhoda. A young sail moved to North London. He wanted to show me his Maoist HQ. And this was the headquarters of the Communist Party of Britain, brackets marxist Leninist. After the war, there were about 60,000 members of the Communist Party in Britain, but by the 70s, it had shattered. This diagram shows the Maoist splinter groups alone, including the one Alexei Sale joined. I used, what I used to do was, I used to sit at the back when they had meetings because I didn't want to be called on or anything. But the problem was that our leader, Reg, he'd often be at a union meeting and he'd come in pissed and then he'd make a speech from the back using my chair right at the back as a as a kind of pulpit and so i'd be sitting like and reggie be going and the labor government is like sweating the workers and he's you know the struggling angola and i'm sitting there like this going you know like and his spit is rolling down on my head and i'm going <laughs> <laughs> you know, so. we will return to his maoist center and why he left but first turns out reg wasn't the only one screaming at the time <laughs> In South London, a group of primal screamers had moved in with the militant squatters of Villa Road, Brixton. One of those squatters was Christian Walmart. They had a padded room that was like really strongly padded, so you couldn't hear the screams from outside. And the idea was that if you screamed out the internal pain that you had from your birth and in the first year, you then liberated yourself and opened yourselves up to I don't know, psychological nirvana. Walmar wasn't a screamer. He was part of a band of left-wing intellectuals who stopped the demolition of these houses. It was a seedbed for a whole lot of alternative movements, which ranged from kind of, you know, flower power type hippies to uh, quite radical left-wing causes. The white middle-class radicals didn't often venture into the basement of 27 on a Saturday night, though. In 27, this was the blues, the downstairs, they had the blues. It wasn't a nightclub, it was a speakeasy. A, a speakeasy, that's right, yeah. yes. And maybe so. <laughs> Brother, we can't quit. The people who knew the password, Neil Kenlock and his fellow Black Panthers. He was the Panthers photographer at the time, and at the time, they felt like they were at war. So this is George Berry. He was the first black man to own a pub in Brixton, maybe in London, which is actually this building that this we're where we are in now. right now. And the National Front came along and burned the pub down. He's proud of his time with the Panthers, but leaving was hard to do. How intense was it as well, a member well, of the Black we, Panthers? We, for instance, there was a, a time when the Black Panthers would say to people, don't work. Don't work for the man. And the man is capitalism. Right. Don't and did people help. do that? Did people yeah, just stop people working and opt out? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it almost yeah, smacks of, of, of being cult-like. Yes, absolutely. But I mean, was it? Was it that intense, do you think? Well, not as much as that, but I, I could see it was going that, that direction. This is what I do to passports. 
The hard left round here wasn't just fringe. In the 80s, a revolutionary feminist took over the local council. Linda Bellos achieved a lot, but what she is remembered for is things like removing the word family from council literature because it was deemed discriminatory. W were you angry at the time? Yes. Do I sound angry now? Yes, of course. Are you course. still angry? I'm angry at injustice. I'm angry that people haven't learned lessons. Because why I ask that question is, for some people at the time, mm. you personified Indeed, I did. loony Absolutely. You, I know that I did. The Daily Mail loved me. The fact is... Were you, was there any truth in that? Well, the, some of the things that were loony then are law now. I wanted... Lambeth to, to, never mind to be a, 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 a soapbox, I wanted them to deliver decent services for working class people. We had a duty to provide... Speaking of soapboxes, isn't it? Yeah. Are, are you ever not on your soapbox? Never. Never. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning ranting at something that's on the, <laughs> been on the World Service in the no, at night. Uh, no. <laughs> does, oh. that, does that look like sort of exhausting, though? No. <laughs> exhausting? <laughs> I'm 63. In 20 years' time, man, I'll talk you off the table, you know. <laughs> in South London during the 70s, it was class war. Same place, 40 years on, class reunion. Do, do you think you're looking back on that period slightly with rose-tinted glasses? I mean, there was a dark side, wasn't there? Of course. Two it's weeks ago, two weeks ago, we heard yeah. about some, no, you know, this alleged mad. slave case yeah. in a mouth. Yeah, yeah, so was, there, there was a dark no, underbelly. That was very marginal. You can't put that down to the culture of the times. We would have been against that kind of thing then, then as, now. As, as now. Broadly, we had a stronger moral fibre yeah. than society in general. I wouldn't disagree with that at all. I think we had, there was, a, 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 a thing, what, CND, there's a whole host of things wanting justice and equality, and lots of us were doing that. And, that, and none of us, some of us are in our 60s now, and we're still doing it. Back in North London, Alexi Sale is not still doing it, and it's taking us a long time to get to his old Maoist HQ. What with all his old comrades coming out of the woodwork? And time to reflect on why he abandoned it all. <laughs> My parents turned a blind eye to the greatest mass murderer of all time. You know, two really, Stalin and Mao. And so it's that hope for a better world that inevitably, you know, can lead you down, you know, the, the road to, you know. That you can right. turn a blind eye, basically, if it doesn't yeah. fit your world because you view. Wish it, yeah, because you're wishing for fairyland. And so, you know, yeah, you, 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 you suspend your critical faculties, you know. I mean, people always have a terrible, people have, you know, it causes people psych, terrible psychic pain to admit that they're wrong, you know, and so, and, 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 um, Have you that problem? Were you wrong? No, I, yeah, I was wrong. Okay, of course I was wrong, yeah. <laughs> yeah it doesn't it seem to be causing you much psychic pain. No, no, well, I've, I've, I've got over that hump. And we have got to where we're going. But this, here we are, is, this is 155 Fortis Road, and it is now uh, a bookmaker's, William Hill. It oh, was a, a formerly that's a little anticlimactic. Yeah, although it's uh, perhaps it's uh, significant, you know, <laughs> that the revolution that it should come to this really, from <laughs> the centre of world revolution to uh, betting shop. Well, it always was a bit of a gamble.